We welcome each other to worship in the name of God, our Creator and Redeemer, who walks with us and promises to be with us each and every step of our lives. Amen. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity. One God who is eager to forgive and who loves us beyond our days. Amen. Dear friends, together let us acknowledge our failures to love the world as Jesus does. God of mercy and forgiveness, we confess that sin still has a hold on us. We harmed your good creation. We have failed to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with you. Turn us in a new direction. Show us the path that leads to life. Be our refuge and strength on the journey through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and friend. Amen.
Beloved of God, your sins are forgiven. And you are made whole. God points the way to new life in Christ who meets us on the road. Journey now in God's abiding love through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. O God, tireless garden of your people, you are always ready to hear our cries. Teach us to rely daily on night and care. Inspire us to seek your enduring justice for all this suffering world. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from Genesis, the 32nd chapter. The same night Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two maids, his eleven children, and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. He took them and sent them across the stream, and likewise everything that he had. Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until daybreak. When the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he struck him on the hip socket, and Jacob's hip was put out of joint as he wrestled with him. Then he said, Let me go, for the day is breaking. What is your name? And he said, Jacob. Then the man said, You shall no longer be called Jacob, for Israel, but Israel, for you have striven with God and with humans, and you have prevailed. Then Jacob asked him, Please tell me your name. But he said, Why is it that you ask my name? And there he blessed him. So Jacob called the place Peniel, saying, For I have seen God's face I have seen God face to face, and yet my life is preserved. The sun rose upon him as he passed Penuel, limping because of his hip. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. Our psalm, Psalm 121, will be read responsibly by full verse. I lift my eyes to the hills from where my help come. My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. He who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep your, you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time on and forevermore. And our second reading comes from... Paul's second letter to Timothy, the third and fourth chapters. Paul wrote, But as for you, continue in what you have learned and firmly believed, knowing from whom you learned it, and how from childhood you have made known the sacred scriptures that are able to instruct you for salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. All scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, so that everyone who belongs to God may be proficiently equipped for every good work. In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, and in view of his appearing and his kingdom, I solemnly urge you, proclaim the message. Be persistent whether the time is favorable or unfavorable. Convince, rebuke, and encourage with the utmost patience in teaching. For the time is coming when people will not put up with sound doctrine, but having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own desires, and will turn away from listening to the truth and wandering away to myths. As for you, always be sober, endure suffering, do the work of an evangelist, carry out your ministry fully. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God.
Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 18th chapter. Glory to you, O God. Then Jesus told them a parable about their need to pray always and not, and not loot, to lose heart. He said, In a certain city there was a judge who neither feared God nor had respect for people. In that city there was a widow who kept coming to him and saying, Grant me justice against my opponent. For a while the judge refused, but later he said to himself, Though I have no fear of God and no respect for anyone, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will grant her justice, so that she may not wear me out by continually coming. And the Lord said, Listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God grant justice to his chosen ones who cry to him day and night? Will he delay long in helping them? I tell you, he will quickly grant justice to them. And yet, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. Dear sisters and brothers in Christ, mercy and peace to you from God our Father and Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. In today's Gospel, Jesus tells a parable about a widow who seeks justice against her oppressor. His, her oppressor. Day after day she appeals to a judge who neither fears God nor his respect for people. Day after day the judge refuses to help her. But she's persistent, tirely bothering the judge until he's sick of her very presence. I will grant her justice, the judge says to himself, so that she may not wear me out. It's kind of interesting and humorous that In the Greek language, so that she will not wear me out is really supposed to translate so that she won't give me a black eye. At the onset, the gospel writer tells us that Jesus' parable is about the need to pray always and not lose heart. But as I was reading this parable, I was wondering, are we really supposed to harass him, wear him down? Is that what prayer? a hard-hearted God until he caves? When you or I receive an answer to the prayer, is it because God is sick and tired of hearing our voice and wants us to keep to ourselves? But this parable raises a number of questions concerning prayer. Like, why does it seem that God delays action for our most fervent prayers? Prayers for healing and justice and protection and peace. Too often, our struggles with prayer lead us to experience our God who seems to be very much like the judge in the parable, turning away from our urgent requests for unknown reasons we can't begin to fathom. So, what are we to make of today's parable? Well, for starters, I was wondering if this gospel story is less about God and more about you and me. I wonder if the state of our hearts about our motive, our prayers. Maybe what's at stake is not who God is and how God operates in our world, but who we are and why we need so desperately to be people of persistent prayer. So let's consider this story from two different angles. First, what can we learn if we put ourselves in the place of the widow? The parable begins with an exhortation not to lose heart. And what does that mean? What does it look like to lose heart in our spiritual lives? Well, the words that come to my mind are weariness, resignation, numbness, despair. I think that when we lose heart, we lose a sense of focus and direction. We lose clarity and begin to uh, doubt God's intentions. We might even get irritable and cynical because our spiritual GPS system seems to go haywire and all the roads that we travel on seem to lead to nowhere. In contrast, the widow in today's parable is the very picture of purposefulness, precision, and clarity. She knows what she wants. She knows its urgency. And she knows exactly where to go and whom to seek in order to get it done. Like so many widows that we read about in the Bible, like the widow of Zarephath, who feeds the prophet Elijah, or Anna, the uh, prophetess who awaits the infant Messiah. 
and the generous widow who gives two coins, two mites, and Jesus commends her for it. There's nothing vague about these bold, these bold, hard-pushing women in today's gospel as she drives the judge nuts with her demands. Give me justice now. I will not stay here and make my demands until you do something. What happens when we pray like the widow? What is prayer for? Well, here's what I believe. When we persist in prayer, really persist with a full heart, something happens. Our sense as to who we are and to whom we belong comes to light, and we mature and solidify our relationship with our God. But here's the biggest surprise. These good and substantial things happen even when we don't receive the answers we hope for in our prayers. Now, I don't mean to suggest that unanswered prayer doesn't take a toll on us because sometimes we feel the hurt of living without answers that we hope for and sometimes we're baffled as to where God is in these situations and sometimes our heart feels as if they might break because of the questions about our prayers but maybe that's the point of the parable that the work of prayer is hard you see, there's a good possibility that the widow's predicament is not straightfor- straightforward. And the issues involved are not black and white, but they're somewhere in that gray area of life. And if that's the case with our prayers, will we keep asking? Will we continue to risk humiliation one more time? Do we still believe that our request is worthy of our articulation? Can we be con- uh, continue to be patient in our prayer life? And are we still capable of trusting in the possibilities of justice? Prayer, for many of us, is a mystery. We pray pray without knowing if there's ever going to be an answer, or if the answer will ever be given to us to know, or if the answer will come quickly or last a long time. We sometimes pray and we can't understand why our earnest pleas for justice or healing or peace will penetrate the walls of God's silence. And yet from the heart of a prayerful prayerful mystery, Jesus asked, will I find faith on this earth? Which I believe is to say that we find people like the bothersome widow with ferocity and tenacity and fortitude to keep on asking and asking and asking. The widow's only power in the story is the power of showing up and having the grit to stay. I think that the story then suggests that this power is not to be taken lightly. In other words, prayer is not to be taken lightly. We can't always know what gets shaken, transformed, upended, or vindicated simply because we show up again and again in prayer. But that's part of prayer. But there's a second way to read today's gospel parable as well. And it might be a little bit of a stretch, but I think that maybe this parable might speak to where some of us often find ourselves in our relationship with God. So what if we're not the widow in this parable? Rather, we're the judge. And God is the persistent widow. The widow that keeps knocking on our doors in the hopes that we will soften our hearts and attend to the pains of injustice that are continually found within this world that God has created. Jesus describes the judge as a man who neither fears God nor has respect for people. And I wonder if we can honestly say that we have never fit that description. (laughs) Can we honestly profess that we're not? indifferent, irritable, closed off, or unsympathetic to others? Do we close our hearts to the pain and brokenness of others, protecting ourselves while throwing others underneath the bus? Don't we usually excel at policing our own borders while looking at the looking the other way at problems that others have? Saying it's not my problem, someone else needs to take care of that issue. Scripture attests the fact that God not only hears the cries of the helpless, but it's in the cries of the helpless. 
For God dwells with the unseen, the unheard, the unloved, the unwanted. God is the wronged, wronged widow crying for justice, pleading for us to listen, to care, and to keep our hearts upon, uh, open for her, on her behalf. And the truth is that the judge is part of who we are. For I believe that we all have a little cynicism found within our daily living. We have his lack of compassion. That also is unfortunately a part of who we are. So if this week's parable is anything to offer us, it's that prayer alone will wear down our inner judge. It's that prayer will ultimately illuminate the darkness of our souls and enable, enable light of God's compassion to allow us to see the oppressed on all corners of our world. And through our persistent prayers, our hearts will soften to the needs of God's good creation. Now, it's not a coincidence that all of today's readings have something about persistence within them. The widow persists in her belief that good things will come to her even when the odds look look difficult. Jacob, wrestling with the angel in total darkness, persists until the blessings of a new name and a new future are granted him. Paul, in his letter to Timothy, encouraged persistence again and again, whether the time is favorable or unfavorable. And even the psalmist reminds us that the reason we can be persistent is because God is. As God is our powerful and relentless keeper who neither slumbers nor sleeps, who watches over our comings and our goings and guards our days and our nights. So our persistence can never be in be, uh, be in vain because it's rooted in God. And what all these readers suggest is that God delights with those who dare to strive with him, contend with him, and wrestle with him. And wrestling, as it turns out, is not a bad or even scary thing because it's the opposite of apathy, the opposite of resignation, the opposite of loneliness. To wrestle with God is to show up day after day in prayer. It's to grapple with our resistance in the darkness, uh, darkest hours of the night. To wrestle with God is to stay near Him, to keep our arms around Him, and to close in on Him until He blesses us. At the end of today's gospel, Jesus asks in the parable, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? Faith. Faith is that which persists, contends, wrestles. And the question that matters is, will he find faith in us? Amen.
gratitude and humility, let us join together in prayer on behalf of all of God's creation. We pray for all the baptized, that they become skilled in compassion and grace and equipped to share the good news with all. Grant your followers persistence in pro- proclamation and prayer. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for air and sky, clouds and sun, as they, that they provide rain to parched lands and relief to flooded grounds. Renew and restore our polluted atmosphere and empower us to be worthy stewards of creation. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for judges and juries and all who work in our judicial systems, that they desire wisdom, seek truth, rule with fairness, and have the courage to do what's right. Eliminate oppression and injustice in our criminal justice systems, in our nations of this world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for all who are lonely, especially those who have newly arrived in an unfamiliar city or country. We pray for political prisoners without recourse to justice. We pray for hospital patients without visitors. And we pray for all who are ill or grief-stricken. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for those in our congregations and communities engaged in advocacy work. That with the persistence of the widow, they lift their voices in seeking justice on behalf of others. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And we pray for those who have taught us faith and now rest in your heavenly peace. That we remember and give thanks for those saints who shared the gospel through word and deed. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. With grateful hearts, we commend our spoken and silent prayers to you, O God, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us share the peace with one another. We now have a time of offering where we take the gifts that God has given us and we share them. We share them with the church and we share them with the world in need. And so thank you for your gifts to your church. pray. Gracious God, in your love you richly provide for our needs. Make of these gifts a banquet of blessing and make us ready to share with all in need through Jesus Christ who sets a table for all. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us into... But deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now receive the Lord's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.